it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. Welcome to the 2021 Granny Stash Down Challenge. This is a challenge I put out to the Fiber Flux community every year and it's really fun. It's a year long project. And this challenge, what I'm doing is challenging you to go through your yarn and grab all of those unlabeled half balls of yarn that don't really have a purpose for them. And what we're gonna do is make a giant granny square and make a beautiful blanket out of some yarn that we may not have used for anything else. Now at the end of the year, you'll have a big blanket and it can be as big as you want. You just work more and more rounds of the square. And so however many rounds you make will determine the height um, and the width of your blanket. So I have gone in my stash and grabbed a whole bunch of yarn. And as you can see, we have some chunky yarn, we have some super bulky yarn, we have, looks like some worsted weight yarn. Most of this has no label on it. Some of it's very old, it's been kind of sitting around. Now in years past, I've sort of come up with a theme. So one year I did um, like blues and purples. Um, uh, last time for the 2020 Stash Down Challenge, I stuck with neutrals. So I did creams, browns, and grays and things like that. This year, I have a few neutrals in here, some grays and creams, but I also have some brights. So I'm gonna, gonna kind of do like some neutrals and brights this year. There are no rules. This is a relaxing year long project. So if you get a big head start on it at the get go, a lot of times when we start a project, it's exciting and we do a lot of stuff to it. If it sits around for a few months over the summer and you don't touch it again till the fall, it's really not a big deal. This is like one of those no rules projects with the only goal being to use up some yarn that's just kind of sitting around, okay? So we're gonna do a granny square. We've done other squares in the past, but we're gonna do a granny square for this one. I'm gonna show you how to make a granny square if you've never made one before. And as you can see, I have my bin. So what I do normally is I will take an empty bin and I'll go around my work area and my craft space and I'll just grab balls of yarn that really have no purpose and no plans for the future for them. Maybe it's a little bit left from a project and I'll throw it in my bin. So I'll throw yarn in my bin, throw yarn in my bin, and when I have a big pile of it, then I'll start on my granny square. So because of all the different weights that I mentioned, that can be a little confusing because what hook do you use, right? So what I do is I choose the thickest yarn in my pile. The thickest yarn that I have here is a super bulky yarn. This is like that blanket yarn. I have a couple different colors here, this cream under here. And I go with the hook size of the thickest yarn that I have. So we're gonna be using a nine millimeter N crochet hook. This is my Furls Candy Shop hook, in case you're interested in getting one for yourself, I'll put the link down below. And you'll also need a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle to weave in the ends. You're gonna be switching yarn colors quite a bit with this, especially if you have smaller balls of yarn, you'll really fly through them pretty quickly. Now, for the thinner yarn, what I like to do is, for example, these two are the same color and I will hold those strands double, and that will equal one of these thicker strands. For the even thinner yarn, for example, this one over here, I might hold three strands of this together in order to give me the thickness of some of these other yarns. Now, if you have a little variation of thinness and thickness throughout your blanket, it, it's not a huge deal. You just don't want like a strand of sock yarn next to a super bulky. It might look a little bit odd. So um, if you can double up or even triple up um, some of the thinner strands, that will help you out too. Now, you don't necessarily have to hold two strands of the same color either. You can get really creative. For example, I have this gray here and I could hold it with this bright coral and it sort of makes like a whole new yarn. So it's a really fun project. And I will say of all the stash down challenge blankets that I've made, I never know what it's gonna look like at the end. It's always a surprise. I mean, you can kind of get an idea by the colors, but it's always a surprise at the end. So for the second part of this video, we're gonna make the granny square. If you've made a granny square before, um, you can kind of skip through the next part and sort of just get started on your own. But if you wanna see the granny square, join me for the next part. Okay, so I sort of cleared away all the yarn and I grabbed the first two uh, yarns that I'm gonna use. This is, um, if you may recognize some of these from some past projects, 
This was from my easy um, ribbed pom-pom hat I made with that. And then this was from my Briar Rose Blanket. So I, these were just leftovers from other projects. So I think it's a really fun way to do that. Now I'm gonna hold these double and the inside of this is like a pretty orchid and a soft gray. So I thought that would be a fun middle color because that'll sort of be the focal point of your blanket. So grab some of your yarn to start and your hook. And I'm gonna, like I said, hold these double. And then what we're gonna do is, let me zoom way in so you can see what I'm doing here. And we are going to start with the center of our granny square and work out. So holding the two strands double, what we're gonna do is wrap the yarn around the hook to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind that loop that you made, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. And you're just gonna pretend this is one strand of yarn. We're not gonna do anything special with that. Next, we're gonna chain four. So wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. And then what we're gonna do is in the farthest chain from our hook, that first chain that we made, we're gonna join with a slip stitch to create a ring. So insert the hook into that farthest chain from the hook, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook and you can kind of open that up a little bit to create a ring. We're gonna hold these tails along the edges we work, which as a side note, whenever you can weave your tails in for these projects with a bunch of different yarn, do that whenever possible. It'll really save you a lot of time at the end. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is chain three. One, two, three. And then in the center of the ring, we're gonna work two double crochet. So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the center of the ring, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. Sliding things over if you need to, still holding those tails along the edge of the project as we work. I'm gonna get a little bit more yarn here. And then we're gonna work another double crochet into the center of the ring. And then we're gonna chain one. And then we're going to, this time, work three double crochet into the center of the ring. So one, two, and three. Now, the chain three that we did at the beginning of the round counted as one of our double crochets. That's why we did three double crochets in this one and we only did two in this one, okay? Because it looks the same now. One, two, three, one, two, three, okay? So then chain one and then we'll repeat what we just did. Three double crochet, one, two, three, and chain one. Then to finish off that first round, push things over if you need to, work three last double crochets into the center of that ring, one, two, and three. Then we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna count three chains up, one, two, three, and we're gonna join with a slip stitch to close the round. Okay, so just sorta, of, might be a little snug because of all the strands of yarn, but just sorta of drill it in there bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Now it kind of looks like a circle, and I know we're after a square shape, but as we start to work more rounds, and you can go in those, um, remember those chain ones we did in between and sort of sharpen up your corners a little bit, okay? Now, one thing I wanted to mention, and you can see from our two balls of yarn that look very different, we have a like a completely different look, almost like a heathered orchid. It's really pretty. And you'll, you'll have, if you're doing this along with me and using scrap yarn, you'll have all these neat surprises along the way um, in the appearance of your blanket. So it is a really fun project. Okay, next thing I wanted to mention, you'll encounter both of these. The first thing you'll encounter is if you wanna stick with the same color with a granny square, you're gonna slip stitch over to that first chain one space, okay? So slip stitch into the next stitch, insert, whoops, insert the hook into that next stitch, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, slip stitch into the next stitch at the top there, and then slip stitch into that chain one space. And now our hook is at the right spot to start round two, okay? So for round two, we're gonna start building corners of our square, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, 
and work two double crochets in that chain one space. That chain three we just did counted as one of those double crochets, so it will look like a grouping of three. Push that over if you need to. Chain one. Now in that same space, we're gonna work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Okay, just like that. And we now have our first corner of the round, okay? So next what we're gonna do is chain one, and then we're gonna skip that grouping of three double crochets and go to the next chain one space. And in that corner, we're gonna work three double crochet. Whoops, I dropped my loop there. So in that corner, we're gonna work three double crochet. So one, two, three, and then we're gonna chain one. And then in that same space, we're gonna work three more double crochet. So one, two, and three, okay? Next corner, and you can see by using this big hook like this, we've already gotten uh, some pretty decent size on our square. Square has uh, grown just a bit already. So chain one, go to that next chain one space and we'll do the same thing. Three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, so one, two, and three. Just like that. Now you're gonna chain one. We have our next corner finished. So we did a chain one, and then hop over to that last corner we haven't worked yet, and work three double crochet, one, two, whoops, and three, chain one, and three more double crochets to finish. One, two, and three. Okay, now to finish off this square, what we need to do is one more time, chain one, and then we're gonna go back where we started. Remember that chain three? Count one, two, three chains up, just like that, and insert the hook, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. So we close the round with a slip stitch, okay? So here's our square so far. It looks really cute, really, really pretty, and the, the colors are fun, how they're mixing. Okay, I wanna show you two more little things about our square before we continue. We're gonna change colors now. I'm gonna show you how to change colors, but also we've learned how to work corners but now we're adding sides. So now our square will have corner, side, corner, side, corner, side, all the way around. And as you build each round, you're gonna add more side spaces on, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. So I'm gonna grab my next color, and we're gonna learn how to switch colors. One more thing before we get going. I like to give this center, remember that tail we wove in as we went along? I like to give that a nice tug before I keep going, and just give that a snip. That way that tail is out of your way. Anytime you weave in some ends as you go, you can snip them um, so they're out of the way and it's really nice. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is add our new color. Okay, let's cut our yarn. This is about six or eight inches. Give yourself a nice little tail there. And then we're gonna wrap the yarn around the hook and we're gonna pull it through. So. So far we've learned if you wanna stick with the same color, you just slip stitch over to that first corner space that you come to. But when you are doing a new color, I cut the yarn and then I grab my new yarn. So I have here some dark charcoal and a little bit of this heathered um, sage color. And then this is from my 12 weeks of gifting. So lots of memories with each ball of yarn. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of line up my ends here. And then what we're gonna do is go into any corner space. I sort of like to go opposite of where I tied this knot because we will be weaving ends in as we go. And it sort of cuts down on the bulk, but that's just a personal preference. You don't have to do that. So insert your hook into any corner space and hook the new yarn right on there. 
and bring it through. Then what we're gonna do is just tie the new yarn right on, right into that corner, and then we're ready to go again. Okay, so we're gonna hold these along the edge as we work. So reinsert your hook back in there. Let me zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Reinsert your hook back in. What you're gonna do is bring up a loop and then you're gonna chain three. One, two, three. And then we're gonna work the beginning of this round the same way we did before. So we did a chain three, that counts as one of our double crochets. So work two more double crochets into the same corner space. One and two. I'm sort of using my finger back here to hold that tail along the edges I work. Okay, now slide things over if you need to. Chain one, and then in that same space, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Okay, so first corner done. Now we are using a lot of colors, but I do like how everything sort of has a muted look to it. Okay, then we're gonna chain one. And now remember how I mentioned we're gonna have some corner and some side spaces? We're gonna work our first side space now. So in that next space, work three double crochet. One, two, three, and chain one. Now we're gonna work a corner space. So go into that next corner a little bit more yarn here and work three double crochet one two three chain one and in that same space work three double crochet one two and three just like that okay so now you can see we have a corner, side, corner. Okay, so you're just gonna keep doing that all the way around. Chain one, work your next side space, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one. Now I'm at a tail from the other side, so I'm gonna just hold that along the edge as I work this next corner. And we did a chain one here, so I'm gonna do three double crochet. One, two, three, chain one, and in that same space, holding those tails. With all these strands, it can be a little cumbersome at times, so just slow down if you have to. So three double crochet in that same corner space. So that was one, now I'm doing two, and then three, just like that, okay? All right, let's keep going around here. Chain one, work your next side space, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, next corner space, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, and then three more double crochets in that same corner space. So one, two, three, chain one. And then we're on that last side, so work three double crochet, one, two, and whoops, my strands got mixed up, three, chain one, and then we're gonna join with a slip stitch to close in that third chain up. So one, two, three, insert the hook in that third chain up. You might have to wiggle it in there because of all the strands. Bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, and round three is complete, okay? Okay, so what you're gonna do to keep going is to keep repeating the round we just did, round three, over and over and over again until your square 
is either as big as you would like it to be and you have a nice blanket in the perfect size that you would like or until you run out of all your scrap yarn. So it's a really fun project and it's nice to see yarn that's just been sitting around for a long time get used up. So that's really nice. I do want to point out that we can, um, as you go, I do like to trim my tails as I go along. So go ahead and trim those up if you need to. Just like that and see how every, everything looks nice and neat when you do that. Um, I did want to mention though, as you work each round, if you've never made a granny square, I did want to show you this, um, you'll have more sides. So the round we just did, round three, was corner, side, corner, side, corner, side, and so forth. But the next round we work will be corner, side, side, corner, side, side, corner, and so forth. So each time you work around, as you're Granny square gets wider and taller, you'll be adding more sides, okay? So the round after that would be corner, side, 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 corner, corner, side, 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 corner, and so forth, okay? So just keep working your square and add to it a little bit of a time, uh, of time throughout the year. And every year when we have these stash down challenges, I'll update and show little pictures throughout the year here and there. So hopefully I'll get to use all my yarn up and I will give you some updates, like I said, throughout the year. And at the end of the year, we'll do a big wrap up and you can see uh, how it looks. If you are doing this challenge with me, be sure and use the hashtag FiberFluxCal to share your work. We also have a Ravelry group and a Facebook group and the links are down below. Um, so you can hop in there and see what other makers are doing. We have other cows that go on throughout the year too, so be sure and check them out as well. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again.